Gaming versus Council Logic US team. And as you can see, things are going to get interesting. Having health potions because you can usually fit those into any build. And so, in a way to call the lane matchup until they get spotted by minions, but uh, unsurprisingly, both teams will be running a jungler. Uh, the jungler for Team Europe will be Shen. Uh, the Europe team, the Europe team, by the way, will have the purple minions. They spawn on the top right. Their health bars are red. They're, they're circled by a red outline. The US team, on the other hand, will have green outlines in their health bars. They're spawning at the bottom left. Their minions are green going up that way, up the, from the bottom left to the top right. And so, right off the bat, you know, there's some strategy going on. We did see that clairvoyance right there. So, uh, Basically, Ash got a lizard bomb, Shen helped to get it, and he was knows about it. So, Miss Fortune versus Twisted Fate mid. Miss Fortune gonna do her best the last hit. There's a couple casts coming in down, getting another one there. A little bit of red card spam from the Twisted Fate. Um, and uh, a little bit of uh, spam as well for Miss Fortune. But uh, this is really gonna be a, a far lane for now. Oh no, Miss Fortune getting a little bit unsafe. Takes uh, about 112 damage now on her. And gets another wild card. So, Miss Fortune's getting harassed super hard by TM. And she's actually misplaying this lane because of that. Blocking a gold card, getting out of range. She's gonna be okay for now. Oh, wild card spam does hit her. There's the gold card hit, gonna get her low again. And yeah, this is a little bit scary. I, I think this is kind of bad play from Chaz, who barely dodges the wild cards. And I mean, that's... I feel like you should do better in this lane already. And oh, yes, Ashley Cole is about to take a dark binding, but she's gonna be okay. Morgana, uh, played by Big Fat Gigi, is gonna be up there against a name that I can't read because it's too blurry for me. So yeah, we're gonna have Ash versus Morgana. That's gonna be a solo top lane. Obviously, we've got two junglers going on here, so Twisted Fate. Down at the bottom, I can see this uh, Soraka and Cassidy. Uh, they, yes, I can see Soraka and Cassidy versus Tarek and Garrett. So really, I gotta tell you, the, the US side really got, I'd say, a slight advantage there. I mean, they're not gonna get any kills though, that's like. Yeah, okay, so you're right. So here's that, that Terran Terran lane. The reason it's so good for those who don't play um, League of Legends, and I'll also introduce them all to you in a minute. Uh, Terran has a range stun, I believe it's 600 range when you hit it at the max, at the max. This is the full two second stun, I believe. And, and Garrett is such a, a powerhouse early game. His damage is super, super high at the very early stage of the game. And it might be he becomes very tanky and durable. And he still scales all right, but it's super. His superpower is really killing people at levels one through nine. That, that's really his big, his big benefit to the team. And combined with a stunner like Terra, he's also one who can heal. It's just such a powerful lane. But the Soraka, the, the Soraka casted in lane that we're seeing here is one that's pretty safe. They both have ranged spells that deal pretty good damage. Uh, and Soraka especially is a great sustainer champion. She can heal. She can give mana back. It's good stuff. But uh oh, here comes the Soraka. There's the time. He's afraid that it was not in range. It flashes down, so MF will be fine. But nice little try there by the shot of course go up as he gave the wizard to Ash. Yeah, trying to give it a little bit of cut off the twist and fight there, getting a lot of mana as well in that middle area. So uh this fortune you feel would come out on top. Twisted Fate's one of those guys that European players do like to play, like I say. We were, I was talking about it earlier with Freak. His ability power has been both to the bit, so he's starting to get picked a lot more again. It's, uh, it's one of those heroes that went away for a while, but he is back in, back in rotation, as it were. At the moment, it is all square. As we'd expect, it's the early game phase, you know, for those that aren't sure. You know, they've got two jugglers, which means two guys going around, picking up the neutrals in around the mid, the neutral area. Now you can see it's to uh, go off on the map. You guys can see it, we can't see it, so... Uh, uh, we can see it. The rest of the teams can't see it. So, uh, no, he's good. He's given up. He's given up. He's, give up. he's going to pack away. So, still, we've got 2v2. Still no first words. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. It's still that bad. You're going to go out and go out and go out and go It is a very tense first part. We thought we saw this. We saw this in the North American finals as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, oh, my God. Picks up Puddle on the feet, but she's gonna be okay. Dropping down to only like 300 something health. And she's actually going back to harass after casting goes, realizing that a move won't be able to land any attacks. 
uh, for quite some time. So just to complete that, oh, there's the hot shot. It does reveal the Moomoo, but Moomoo will back off and not bother anymore. His golden buff has timed out as well, so uh, not too much more span for him. Terry, the uh, champion who seems to have clairvoyance here, will continue to try to reveal the enemy team and do what they can here. And as the, as the minute count ticks up to about seven minutes, the, uh, the first neutral, uh, the buff camps will respawn around 7, 10, 7 minutes roughly, depending on how fast they die. And that's what we're going to see.